Welcome back to another video. It's your favorite math professor here, Dr. Tarsia Hubert. And in this video, we're going to look at how to calculate the mean of a discrete random variable, okay? Um, hopefully, you watched the last video, which we talked about exactly what is a discrete random variable. It's basically a table of every possible value x resulting from a probability experiment or some type of experiment along with its probability, okay? And now we're going to use that probability distribution to calculate the mean. So let's jump right in and look at what is the mean. So the mean of a discrete random var variable is given by the formula. So remember, this is Greek letter mu. So mu of x, this is our random variable x, is equal to the sum of each individual data point times its probability. So you have to find the product of each individual data point and its probability and then add it all, all of those up. So x is the value of the random variable and p of x is the probability. So here's an example. In this following probability distribution, the random variable x represents the number of marriages an individual aged 15 years or older has been involved in. So you want to compute and interpret the mean of the random variable x. So this means that uh, approximately point the probability of a randomly selected individual 15 or older being involved in zero marriages is 0 0.272. Being involved in one marriage is 0 0.575 and so forth. As you can see, the highest is 0.575. That's the highest probability. And the lowest being 5. I don't think I know anybody personally that has been involved in 5 marriages. But you see, the probability is really, really slim. So I want to calculate the mean. And I am going to calculate the mean in Excel, y'all. So let me follow me. We're going to go to Excel. I'm going to take this data and put it over into Excel. And on in my math lab, if you're using my math lab for your homework, when they give you data tables, there is an option for you to automatically go to that data in Excel. So make sure you're using that option so you don't have to type it in. Because when you type it in, there's a really high chance that you might have a, a transfer error, okay? All right, so I am in Excel, and I have that data here. Each of my outcomes, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the probability of each outcome. And so in order to find the mean, the only thing I have to do is to multiply each of these, the outcome with this probability. So I'm going to hit equal here, and I'm going to do this cell times this cell, and hit enter. Then I'm going to click in this cell, and I'm going to drag it down so that it will repeat that formula for each cell. And so the mean is going to be equal to the sum of these values, the x times the probability of x. So I'm going to equal that to the sum, open parentheses, and I'm going to highlight all of these columns, close parentheses, and hit enter. And that gives me the sum, and so that is my mean. My mean is approximately 0.919, or if I round it to one decimal place, 0.9. Your homework will tell you how many decimal places to round it to, so you want to be really careful about that. But it's approximately 0.9. That is the mean. And so what does that mean? That means, on average, the number of marriages an individual 15 years or older has been involved in is expected to be about 0.9. So really close to 1. Um, you can say about 1, um, but 0.9 is the mean. All right, the interpretation of the mean says, suppose an experiment is repeated in independent times and the value under, of the random variable is recorded. So you repeat this experiment and each time you're recording the value of the random variable. So like for instance, if, if a survey was given to ask people how many times they were involved in, how many marriages they were involved in, that represents your N, however many times you give that survey out. Well, as the number of repetitions of the experiment, experiment increases, that means the more times you do it, the mean value of n trials will approach mu of x, which is your mean. So it's saying the more times you do the experiment, the closer the mean of your actual um, results will get to the mean, the mean that we calculated. All right. So if you repeat the experiment over and over and over, the more times you do it, the closer your value will get to the calculated mean. That's what the mean represents. All right, the mean is also called the expected value. All right, so another name for the mean of a random, discrete random variable is the expected value. So here's another example. A life insurance company sells a $250,000 
one year term life insurance policy to a 20 year old male for $350. According to the National Vital Statistics Report, and it tells you the report number, the probability that the male survives the year is 0.998734. Compute and interpret the expected value of this policy to the insurance company. All right. So we're going to calculate the expected value. So we have to have a table because we want to calculate the mean. We have to have a table that has the um, possible outcomes with the value or the probability of each outcome, okay? So I have my table here with my random variable X and with my probability columns. Now this is a little different, okay? I have to think about it and it's because it's to the insurance company. So if I'm the insurance company, I have to think about what are my possible value, what are my possible outcomes, okay? My first possible outcome is that I gained $350 for the male purchasing the policy, okay? So outcome number one is $350. So I'm going to put 350 here. That is because I'm the insurance company and someone buys the policy, right? Now they buy the policy. That means I profit $350. All right. The probability of me profiting $350 is the same as the probability of the male surviving. Because if I don't have to pay out anything, if he survives, then I profit $350 as an insurance company. So my prob probability here will be 0.998734. All right. Now the other outcome is if that man dies that year and I have to pay out $250,000. Now it would be negative $250,000, but I have to take into consideration that he did pay three fifty, dollars So I would have to do $250,000 minus $350,000 which would give me, that comes out to be $249,650. So if he dies, that's what I'll end up paying out. Because the other three fifty dollars would be the money that he gave, right? Now, what is the probability of him dying? Well, the probability of him dying is 1 minus the probability of him surviving. So 1 minus 0.998734, which if you subtract that, that equals to 0 0.001266. All right. So these are the only possible outcomes. Either he's going to survive, he pays 350. That's all I get is 350, and the probability of that is 0.998734. Or he dies, and I have to pay out this amount of money, and the probability of that is, you can see it's almost zero, 0 0.001266. So there's a really small chance that he's going to die. But in order for me to calculate the expected value, which is the mean, I have to do each x times its probability. So here I will have my P x times p of x column. And I would do 350 times 0.998734. If you multiply that out, you get $349.5569. I said dollars, but that it has no value on it. It's 349.5569 right now. And then I would do negative 249, 249,650 times this 0 0.001266 and if I multiply that out I get negative 316.0569 and so in order to find the mean I will take the sum of the x times p of x which means I will add these two together and when I add those together I get a positive 3350 so the expected value here is 3350. That is the mean, or in this case, the expected value. So what does that mean? That means if the company sells many of these policies to 20 year olds, then on average, they will make $33.50 per policy, okay? So that's what they'll make per policy on average. Now, if you're interested in this type of work then you might want to look into the field of actuary that's a-c-t-u-a-r-y um actuaries do a lot of calculating 
calculations involving risk, and a lot of them work for insurance companies. So if this is some of interest to you, then look into the field of actuary. All right? And I think that may be all I have for y'all. Let me just double check. I think that's the end. Yep, that's all I have for you in this video. This is how you calculate the mean of a discrete uh, probability distribution. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to send me an email. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.